All right, question seven is similar to what we talked about with aspirin, in that we're oversimplifying this a little bit. Um, we're dealing with an amide hydrolysis here, but it's a very specific one, um, and it has some unique issues that don't apply to many amides in the real world. Um, this one is basically very strained because you have an sp2 carbon in a four-membered ring, uh, as a result, you don't get proper resonance. So the normal stabilization of an amide doesn't really happen here. Um, that's an interesting piece of trivial pursuit that I had a student tell me once while taking this exam. Amazingly enough, I found it word for word when I did a Google search later. Hmm. So that was years ago. Live and learn. Unfortunately, they learned about Chag. So, um, the enzyme that does this is called beta-lactamase, and what it does is open up the ring very much the way that we would chemically do with acid and water. So that's what we're going to assume it is for the purposes of this exam. Um, the problem with that is that as that enzyme is induced in bacteria by overproduction, overuse of antibiotics of this, of this class, they become ineffective. Um, when you treat bacteria, any that survive are going to be resistant. So the ones that keep growing after the first treatment are now resistant to the drug, or at least partially resistant to the drug. So penicillins are very good, but also very, very, very overused. And so there's a problem with emerging bacteria that are resistant to them. Um, so we can cheat that to some extent by using uh, what are called beta-lactamase inhibitors, which is a throwaway molecule that you put in with this that has a lactam but isn't um, a lactam is a cyclic amide that has a four-membered ring like this but is not penicillin based so just give the enzyme something else to chew on so that penicillin can do its job or the penicillin class the um, beta lactam, -lactam antibiotics um, these are also uh, there are multiple ones in this class penicillin is not used that much anymore uh, more commonly you'll see amoxicillin which you've probably taken yourself if you're not living under a rock. Okay, so we're going to pretend that that's just acid and water and talk about its hydrolysis. As I said, this is a uniquely problematic amide because this is so the, the amide is so strained. So in this case, we actually can get direct water attack. We're not going to treat it that way, um, but it's a very, very unhappy molecule. Um, it's part of how its mechanism works in defeating bacteria, but... Um, it's also a problem in, in terms of that strain makes it vulnerable to hydrolysis in ways that other, other molecules would not be. So we end up with the protonated version like this. And now we have a reason for hydrolysis to occur. Now... Protonation, when it comes to a carbonyl-based functional group, ketones, aldehydes, esters, and amines, occurs first at the carbonyl group. The easy drawing here would be just to protonate the nitrogen first, but that nitrogen's electrons are not really as available as you, that you think they are. In this strained case, they're more so than normal, but you really shouldn't be drawing amides like that. It's a mistake to do that. Um, so here is what has to happen. We're going to have now a water attack, and we get here. So I'm just going to cut off the uh, non-critical parts here for the moment. So I'm just going to chop that with the S. And this is our nitrogen here, and we'll just chop that here. So we're just chopping the ring off those extra carbons out of the way. Of course, it would help if you do a reaction to actually draw it. All right, never mind. Let's just get rid of this. All right, so if we have that attack, we're looking at now this. We're looking at the protonated water that came in as our nucleophile. And we're looking at our other part of the ring that we don't care about. And we still have an R group here, which isn't doing anything. What's going to happen from there is we're going to lose that hydrogen and we're going to have to protonate the nitrogen. Now there's no carbonyl group, so there's zero resonance. In an amide, normally there would still be resonance going on. You have to break the pi bond before you can do anything with the nitrogen. This is an odd case where you probably could, in 
reality, protonate the nitrogen first, but you should not be drawing it that way. It is bad form to draw it that way for any other amid. So we're going to neutralize that, which will give us an, a neutral intermediate, which is ugly, which is to have two OHs and a nitrogen on the same carbon. And our R group. Then, without a carbonyl group around, then you can use the nitrogen lone pair to protonate it. Then and only then should you be doing that. So this is the point where protonation of the nitrogen can happen realistically. Now we have a driving force for it. Those lone, the lone pair is now accessible. Up until the carbonyl was gone, in most cases, that lone pair would be off limits. Okay. So we're looking at a hydrolysis very similar to what we've seen before, which is that this will now liberate the nitrogen since it's a leaving group once it's protonated. So now we have our R group, our NH, the four-membered ring is now out. I'm going to draw the rest of the ring this time so that we can see the whole structure. That's now out. We have an OH over here. We have our carbonyl group, and it's protonated because we're still dealing with an acid hydrolysis. So something has to take care of that, which is going to be water. So neutralize that, and we're done. Now, in any amide, you should be drawing protonation of the carbonyl first, because you need the carbonyl to be gone before you can use the lone pair on the nitrogen to do anything else with, which is necessary to finish this mechanism. 